Hello everybody, this is Nate from Team Chaos and in this tutorial we're going to be doing a breakdown of this chair material that you see in front of you right now. Now this tutorial has been somewhat surprisingly highly requested by a lot of you uh, through, you know, uh, by, by expressing your wishes through YouTube comments and we are listening so we really wanted to do this tutorial for you folks. Um, now, as you'll see, there's really not a whole lot of science behind our setup here. It's just kind of a relatively basic setup. We're going to be dealing with a photo scanned asset here, but we will uh, do, we will make some creative decisions as to how we actually set up our material here. It's still going to be sort of based on uh, realism, but we also are directed things a little bit here. But enough of that, enough of the chitter chatter. Uh, let's uh, Let's just dive deep into things, shall we? Okay, so first up, let's take a look at how our scene is set up. So as you can see, we are in an interior and the interior has been very meticulously modeled and textures. We spent a lot of time modeling in all kinds of different details and well, none of that is true. Uh, our, um, the whole, our entire scene is basically an HDRI. OK, uh, the HRI serves as our background and it serves as the main and only lighting in our scene. There's no other lights in here. We haven't even used the uh, dome projection mode here. We just went with the spherical one and that's really it. Right. This is what you see in the background when we jump into our camera. You see the HDRI and also the lighting comes from the HDRI as well. Now we did position the camera just so you know it kind of sells the effect that like we are in an actual interior uh, but that was very quick to set up. We just you know hunted for the sort of the appropriate angle and you know once we landed on it we, we went with it. For the camera itself we do have a pretty high focal length just because we kind of figured that's going to look cool and that's pretty much all that there is to the actual scene and the scene lighting. Okay, so that's kind of our entire environment, our entire scene, right? Real simple, but also really fast to render. And it kind of looks cool as well. Okay, so that's it for the scene. Uh, let's move on to the material breakdown for our chair material. Okay, so let's first start by talking about the texture assets that we have our, at our disposal. So first up, we have our diffuse slash base color texture here. Uh, we have our roughness texture, our normal map texture, and our displacement map texture. So these are typically, well, say for the displacement map, uh, these are your kind of, I guess, typical ingredients for creating cool looking realistic materials, right? Right, now let's maybe open up the base color texture here. Um, just so we can kind of analyze how this asset was made. And so as you can see, we're dealing with a photo scanned asset that's also been UVW unwrapped, right? So all we had to do in this case was just take this diffuse texture and just plug it into the base layers texture slot. And just like that, as you can see, it looks great. It maps perfectly to our chair and that's pretty much all that there is to it. Now, at this point, we did tweak the setup just a little bit and what we did was we added a corona color correct shader okay so we added it in because we thought that you know the this texture just looks a little bit too saturated uh based on well our artistic vision so what we did with the color correct shader is we just went into it and we lowered the saturation um for this uh particular texture right and um this looks a little bit more desaturated now and we kind of prefer the look so we just went with it right right okay so next up is the roughness map uh, so a roughness map is a data map right uh, which means that typically the way that most assets not all of them but i guess arguably most assets are designed to work um, is you want to set the uh, color profile for your data maps to be set to linear okay if you do that uh, then if you just plug this thing into it you're going to get a uh, the asset looking uh, very close to how the original author intended it to look like. Uh, now, this is true for most assets, but not all of them. There's a lot of assets out there where you just go with the embedded or the sRGB color profile. Uh, but, you know, this is supposed to be considered as a proper workflow, but it does depend on the asset and how it was created, how it was designed to work. OK, um, now in our case here, uh, what we did was we actually uh, loaded our uh, roughness map texture with the embedded color profile and that is because uh, we knew we were going to tweak 
uh, the, uh, the roughness effect because we were going for a really rugged, really worn look. And we knew uh, straight off the bat that we were going to heavily tweak uh, the effect this texture has on our material. So we didn't even bother setting it to a lin linear color profile. Okay. But what we did here was we brought in another Corona color correct shader. Okay. And we've basically used it uh, to kind of increase the brightness here. Okay. Until we got the look that you see in front of you right now. So this is not necessarily how this asset was designed to look like. It's not necessarily uh, super realistic either because you have these parts here where we can see that the roughness is not quite as high. And most of the other parts of this sort of uh, material now is super rough. You can barely make out any reflections. It's not necessarily the most realistic approach. It's not how this asset was even designed to kind of work, but we kind of like the look. It looks very worn. And so, you know, ultimately we just went with it. But again, broadly speaking for most of your da uh, data maps, so that's your roughness maps, your glossiness maps, your normal maps, your displacement maps, broadly speaking, you want the color profile typically to be set to linear. Okay. Okay. Well, as far as roughness goes, that's all that we did. So next up, we focused on the normal map, okay? And normal map is, uh, as alluded to earlier, it's, it's another data map, right? Uh, so uh, what we did here, or data texture, depends on the lingo that you're, that you're used to using. But uh, this texture, again, it was designed to be used with the linear color profile. But in this case, uh, because we know that we need to bring in uh, a Corona normal uh, map shader, okay? setting the normal uh, texture to be uh, to be you know the color profile and it to be linear is not strictly necessary because as soon as we connect this uh, normal texture into the normal shader it's going the color profile is automatically going to be set to linear for you and if you had it set to linear before well well then it's just going to be set properly to linear once you plug it in anyway okay so in that case it's not going to change at all all right so all we had to do at this point was just connect this thing into the bump slot in our uh, material here and also make sure that the bump effect is actually enabled. And it is. Now, you might actually argue that the effect is just a little bit too strong, but, you know, we're going for a rugged uh, look. We are exercise exercising our artistic license here. And so, you know, we like the look. And so that's what we went with. Then, last but not least, we plugged our displacement map, which was also loaded in with a linear color profile. We plugged it into the displacement slot in our material. If you don't have it, if you don't see it, just go under the basic menu here and make sure that the displacement channel is uh, turned on. And then obviously we went into our displacement settings and we tweaked the max level. So we just dropped it down to 0.01 centimeters. Uh, we thought that uh, looked the best. And so this is ultimately the result that we ended up with. We liked it. And so in a nutshell, that's all that there is to this wooden chair material. Now, we also have our violin here, but we won't showcase you how we created the material for it in this tutorial because we already we already showcased it in our physical material series of tutorials. So if you're interested in how we created the violin material, well, make sure to check out that series out. Now, at this point, maybe it's worth reiterating the fact that, you know, because we're dealing with a photo scanned asset. Typically, if you're trying to make the asset look like it was looking in reality, you would typically just take your all of the maps you get and you would just plug them in uh, where they need to go. Uh, you really shouldn't tweak them too much if you want to get close to how the actual uh asset looked like in reality. But in this case, as we mentioned, we wanted to kind of create a bit more of an interesting looking material. And that's why we played with the reflective properties for it. We kind of bumped the bump amount um, a little bit higher than what it probably should be, et cetera, et cetera. But these are all creative decisions in this situation. Hopefully you'll agree it created a bit more of a compelling image. Okay, but there's one more thing that we could still talk about here, and that is our tone mapping settings. We haven't used the default stack here. As you can see, we kind of went with a more customized stack. So first up, we have a simple exposure operator. So we just, you know, used it to kind of increase the exposure here a little bit. You might argue that we increased it a little bit too much, but again, artistic license here that we're leveraging, we kind of like the look, so we went with it. Then we've got a filmic tone map operator. We just used it to up the rich shadows here ever so slightly. We've increased up to a value of 0.25. We could have, you know, maybe increased the highlight compression uh, to make those white 
parts of the image, so to speak. There's those highlights a little bit more compressed, but we haven't. So ultimately, this is kind of the only thing that we did. We just played with the rich shadows a little bit. OK, very minor change. Then we have a LUT that we brought in here. It's the one of my personal favorite LUTs, Kim Amlin's Photographic 03 LUT. And this one makes a huge difference in our image, as you can see. Um, you know, it just gives our image a certain photographic look, right? So that's why we went with this LUT. And that's um, that's the tone mapping that we've used here. And at the risk of, you know, repeating ourselves, um, that's pretty much all that there is to it. That, these are the settings that we've used. All right, and that's a wrap for this tutorial. We hope you've learned something new. And if you have any uh, other suggestions for future tutorials that we should do, please do let us know because we are listening. Now, as we always say, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.